you wrote a great book called Death by Meeting, uh, where you, you address a lot of things, I'm sure, around this. But I, I want you to take us right there. Okay, so we've got a CEO, we've got leaders that are listening in here, and they're going, what, what does that mean, Pat? Tell <clears throat> me specifically, how am I supposed to take an interest? And then and once I'm taking an interest, what, what captain role am I playing in these meetings? Well, one of the things we've just dis discovered, Ken, it sounds weird to say we've discovered it because you said I wrote a book about this. Meetings are even more important than we had ever thought. If the meetings in an org, if a leader does not have great meetings, he or she is not an effective leader. Mm -hmm. The most important moment in a, in a leader's day, week, month is when they're leading people in meetings. Because if you think about it, what is leadership? Where does it occur? Is it walking down the hall and saying inspiring things? Is it giving a speech at a conference or something like that? Those are anomalies. Most of leadership is when you're sitting with your team in a room and either holding them accountable, challenging them around decisions, being vulnerable, making difficult decisions, and moving the organization forward. And if a leader says, I don't really like going to meetings, they are saying, I don't like leading. And what that means is if their meetings are boring, that's on them. If their meetings are unfocused and they wander, that's on them. If nobody is really engaging and pushing on each other in a meeting, that's on them. If they're not driving to closure and clarity, that's on them. And so what leaders have to do is say, this is my number one job. And I have to learn everything I can about how to make this meeting focused, compelling, um, honest, and driving to closure. And so it really is about saying, this is my job. It, if you're a surgeon, you better be reading books about how to do surgery well. If you're a football player, you should be studying other people that are good at football and, and learning about how to do that. If you're a leader in an organization, you should be reading about how to make my meetings great because that is where you lead. Mm. Okay. I can't so, emphasize that enough, Ken. Yeah, I, I agree. So let's stay here for a minute. So what would you yeah. say to somebody, uh, let's just say they're sitting here with us and they go, Pat, okay, you're, you're stepping all over my toes. Uh, ah. I, my meetings are all over the place. I, I can't even describe the last five meetings we had because maybe I was half asleep. I was just there. I contributed a little bit. They're admitting, okay, my meetings, I'm not doing a good job leading them at all. How do they start? Do those little attributes that you just listed out, do they look yep. at that and go, okay, I got to make sure every meeting's got a little bit of that? Is that how they start? Here's what they have to realize first, Ken, and that is this. You can't have meeting stew. Meeting stew is when we take every different kind of meeting and throw it in the same one and wonder yes. why it doesn't turn out good. Yes. They have to realize there's actually four different reasons for having a meeting, and you, you have to separate these. One purpose to have meetings is just to catch up with people on what's going on. You should do that for five minutes every day. If you work in the same location, just get together in a room and go, what are you doing? What are you doing? How was the game last night? What did you think about this? Hey, where's Fred? Oh, he's traveling. Great. Enough. Don't sit down. Don't have an agenda. It's just shooting the stuff and getting on the same page and kind of getting in touch with each other. Mm -hmm. Five minutes a day, no more. Don't do that at your other meetings and, and, and waste time. Mm -hmm. If you're doing that every day, when you get together for meetings that need to be more focused, you're going to go there. <clears throat> the second kind of, the reason that you have to have a meeting, the second kind is to move the ball forward, if you will. It's to make tactical decisions to keep moving the ball down the field, using a football analogy. This is what we call a staff, a weekly staff meeting. You and your leadership team are getting together saying, how are we doing? What's going on right now? What do we need to be doing this week to make sure that things are getting better? You're not there to go over administrative details. That's what you do for five minutes a day. You're not there to talk about the strategy and whether or not it should be changed or what's going on in the industry and all these other things. That's for a different meeting. Have a focused, tactical meeting that's all about the priorities we have, how are we doing against those priorities, and what adjustments do we need to make this week, okay? That has to be completely tight. If we're letting administrivia and strategic issues and brainstorming and, and other things leak into that meeting, that's how it gets unfocused. And that meeting right there, that weekly staff meeting, is by far our most important one. We need to limit it to tactical subjects. We need to have a very limited things, number of things we're going to talk about. We need to go there and assess how we're doing first 
before we put together an agenda, then we need to say, now we know what we have to talk about. Let's talk about the right things. So that's a whole bunch of stuff. And before we get into that, the next kind of meeting we need to have is occasionally, and maybe it's once a month, maybe it's a couple times a month, it really depends on what's going on. We need to have these bigger picture, strategic, thematic meetings where we're talking about one big, hairy topic, one, a competitive threat, a big change in the market, a need for a new strategy. Instead of talking about that for 15 minutes during our weekly meetings, we need to go off, create enough space, a couple hours, to roll up our sleeves, do a little bit of pre-reading and research, and come to that meeting ready to have wonderful arguments and brainstorm and push on each other and solve that problem. But too many leaders try to include strategic topics because they're the most interesting, and they mix them in with tactical topics and administrative ones, and it just doesn't work. And then there's the fourth kind of meeting we need to have. And that is sometimes we need to step back and breathe and just check in. Are we doing the right things as a team? Is the culture the right? This is something we probably have to do once a quarter. We have to get out of the office, go across the street to a hotel, get a room for four hours and sit there as a team and just take a breath and evaluate. Now, everybody's like, man, that sounds like a lot of meetings. First of all, if you do those meetings correctly, every one of them will be enjoyable, compelling, and productive. Nobody will complain about them. What they complain about is mixing it all up together and wondering if anything is really getting done. Secondly, if you have all of those meetings, it's going to add up to about 15% of your time. Mm. Now, if a leader complains about spending 15% of his or her time with his or her team in working meetings, getting things done, and I think they've probably lost sight of what their job is about. So that's a long conversation. But if we don't separate out, separate out those four different kinds of reasons for getting together in meetings, it's never going to work.